This little piece of clay from the library's collections is packed full of information from 4,200 years ago. The language of the inscription is Sumerian. Sumerian is the oldest written language. It's not related to any of the Indo-European or Semitic languages in that part of the world. There are six professionally written lines of cuneiform script on it. Uh, and this script uh, is already a thousand years old. Uh, it descends from the first pictographic Sumerian script of about 3200 BC. In the early years of the 20th century, we have a disaster. Uh, the antiquities market in the West was flooded with thousands of cuneiform tablets. They had been ripped out of their original context um, in the sites where the illicit robbers were working uh, and distributed across the world so that tablets of an individual archive can be found in museums from Moscow to London to Chicago. We may be able to reconstruct what's going on in the individual tablets uh, and by comparison with the others uh, in the archive as a whole, but we can never reconstruct the physical archaeological context from which they came. And so there's a great loss of information there. The content of the tablet is very simple. It simply mentions a large quantity, 22 jars, of lard or pig's fat. It gives the name of the responsible official uh, and it states that this fat was dispensed in the city of Zabala. We think that these jars were perhaps 80 litres each, so that means that you're talking about 400 litres of lard. We do have um, texts um, which uh, deal with textile workers, and uh, they are issued um, quantities of lard along with other substances, including what I called potash. Now, potash is uh, an alkali produced from burning uh, salt-loving plants, halophytic plants as they're called, and it's well known as a substance used for making soap or a substitute for soap in antiquity. Um, soap itself is very rarely mentioned in ancient texts, whether they are biblical, classical or Mesopotamian, uh, and we don't know a word for Sumerian soap but we might perhaps have some evidence in uh, the archaeological evidence for the existence of soap. The impression of a cylinder seal on a tablet from about 2100 BC, uh, which shows the king, we know he's the king because he has uh, the king's characteristic turban, the king marching along uh, wearing nothing at all uh, except a towel draped over his left arm uh, and he's holding a little cup in one hand. My guess is that he's not holding um, a drink to take into the shower but soap and this is the soap dish that he's carrying. An amount of um, 400 litres of um, <coughs> pig's fat, whether it's um, intended for soap or anything else, is obviously something outside the uh, range of an individual household and so I think we can reasonably assume that um, this document comes from an institution, uh, whether that's a secular institution which is more likely or possibly a temple. That it's a reasonable assumption is in fact uh, very clear because there are other tablets in the museums of the world which um, mention one of the principal members in in our text, Mr. Bali, as his name is, uh, and he is found in similar documents. Of course, the tablet itself mentions the city of Zabala, which is um, in South Iraq, and it's eight kilometers uh, north of an even larger city called uh, Umma. This tablet might possibly have come from Zabala, but it's perhaps more likely that it came from Umma itself. How then did it arrive here? 
It formed part of the collection of Sir Stephen Gaisley, Pepys Librarian for Magdalen College, who presented it to Cambridge University Library in the 1920s. Thomas Fish, later a distinguished sumerologist, deciphered the tablet but never published the text. Since then, many other tablets from the same archive, also illicitly excavated at Umma, have surfaced in museums all over the world, and our tablet now makes its own small contribution to the reconstruction of a government office more than 4,000 years ago.